Today I'm going to take you on a tour of my color sketchbook. I love to play with color, especially limited color palettes. So I choose a red, a blue, and a yellow. I have white and sometimes black to create an idea page with brush marks of each different color I can make with those combination of colors. Of course, there are infinite possibilities for each combo, but it gives you a taste of what you can come up with when you do this. New videos are coming out every Tuesday, so make sure you click the QR code to be notified as soon as it's available. Here's my color sketchbook. The cover is not beautiful, but <laughs> at least it's not the original cover. So you can see I put the three colors I choose at the top of the page and then I start mixing and just start making all of the different colors I can. Of course not every single one because there's just too many, but I get an idea. Sometimes I create a page with a little study on it just to see what it might look like if I use those colors. Here's some more ideas. Here's another page with a study on it too. You can see I usually pick a red, a yellow, and a blue. With those colors you can get just about any color you want. But they all tend towards different shades, like some of these are more teal. Some are more grayish blues, like if you're looking at the blues. Sometimes I add more colors uh, to the mixes and sometimes less. So if you look up Zorn palette, you'll see what colors I used there. It's a very limited palette and very fun to work with. And then these are color wheels that I made that all have um, a color wheel or a mother color in the middle. And you can use that mother color to harmonize colors. So I used it here and then added other colors to it. And so all of those colors are harmonized because the mother color is part of it. So I got stuck on a trend here and kept doing it. There's the mother color and then the beautiful colors you can create with it. It's kind of fascinating to do this experiment with the mother color and then um, other colors added to it. They're just gorgeous so rich and beautiful and here's another one a couple more uh, and then so sometimes I experiment with super limited palettes too so this was all my different yellows that I have mixed with black and you get all kinds of greens with yellows so it's very interesting to play with Here's some more, these are more recent ones. I started playing around with some quinacridone magenta and burnt sienna. And I think this might be the end. Oh, almost. Beautiful colors. So I, after showing you all that, now I want to give you an example of me doing it. All right, here's a new page. I'm going to write my colors at the top. I'm going to use quinacridone magenta 
yellow, deep. And my trusty cerulean blue. I'm kind of stuck on that blue lately. It just makes really pretty teals and kind of smoky grays. You can even get into some navies and slate blue grays. It's just really pretty to work with. It also mixes well with the magenta and um, we'll see what it does with the yellow deep today. I don't know that I've mixed those two together yet. Here you can see my palette because I like to work with acrylics but they dry so fast. I learned this trick and it has been a game changer. It's just a lunch tray that you can get on Amazon. You lay paper towels on it and then soak it with water. And then on top, you put a piece of tracing paper. And if you get 11 by 14 inch tracing paper, it fits perfectly on the lunch tray. This just helps prevent the paint from drying out and if you cover it I have another like larger cookie sheet that I cover them with I can come back the next day and my paint will still be wet and ready to use so I feel like I waste less paint um, by having a wet palette like this So I usually try to have just the color straight out of the tube just to see what it looks like. And um, then I just start mixing. So sometimes I will keep just the straight color and add white to see what colors I get. And I'll keep adding different iterations of that, like keep going lighter and lighter. And it really just gives me an idea of what different values and colors I can get with the one color. Then I start to add in other colors. So I added in a little bit of the yellow deep and it's going to get me closer and closer to an orangey color. So um, I like to kind of go through the rainbow and see what types of reds I can get and then what types of oranges, yellows, blues, greens and purples will also show up. And then within all that, you can get lots of beautiful neutrals by combining complementary colors. And um, we'll see how that happens in a little bit. Right now, I'm just adding more yellow, more white, just to see what kinds of colors I can get. So that's like a little, like a lovely yellow orange which could be really helpful in a painting. It's a really pretty color. And the other two that I swatched on there are like coral oranges. So I could push those to be really, really light. So as you can see, it's really just a taste of what you can get. And I'm gonna have a bunch of colors on this page and it's just the tip of what you can come up with when you start mixing. This is a great, exercise to do when you aren't sure what you want to create that day uh, you just start to play with color and see what happens and sometimes once you start painting or once you start mixing these colors you'll get really interested in a color combo that you see and it may lead to you creating something it's really just a relaxing way to see what can happen. So there's the cerulean on its own and then with it mixed with the yellow deep. Those are very bright colors. And if you like bright colors, then go for it. I tend to use more neutral colors, not really neutral. I shouldn't say neutral, like neutral in the sense that I use a lot of creams and tans. Not that, but I guess I use more muted colors. So 
like that green, I would use more than the green next to it. And it's still kind of bright. So I don't even know how much I would use that. Um, but the color, the coral colors above those greens, I would use those a lot. So adding more blue, we're getting more into the teals. And I use teal a lot. It's one of my favorite colors. And so I always love finding out new combinations for how to get teal. And then the lighter it gets, it can be like a minty green that's really pretty. And now I am seeing that the cerulean and the yellow deep are making really beautiful teals and that's good to know because if I want to do uh, something that's uh, floral with the blues I can do that if I wanted to do like a landscape with the ocean I could do that and if I just want to make an abstract that feels really calm and soothing I would use teal also so here we have some cerulean now mixed with the Quinn magenta and the yellow deep because I'm mixing it with the green that I need. So this is all three colors together. So you can get to this point and see what all three make. So that purple is gorgeous. That deep dusky purple. I would use that like that paired with the teal. Looks like a really beautiful combo to me. Add that with one of the warmer colors, like a pop of the warm coral or yellow, and you've got a beautiful combination to play with. Um, so once you have the, all three colors on your brush, you may want to start again with uh, another brush just to get back to the simpler colors so you can start mixing and see what um, is gonna happen. Or you can take your mixes, so I have that purple mix, and the complement is yellow. So I know I should be able to make a grayish neutral color, and it is. It's still purple, or it's leaning towards purple, but I could keep going with the yellow and make it even more um, gray, or even make it go warmer towards a yellowish gray. So now here I have a green color again and because I know the complement of green is red, I can add my magenta to it to tone it down and looks like we are getting closer to an olive green which is awesome. I love those olive green colors. Um, it can be helpful to have a color wheel up on your wall, even if it's one that you make, just to help give you that visual reminder of what the complementary colors are. Eventually, after you play for a while, it will become second nature, but at first, it's it can be hard to remember. And so, um, it's good to remember, because look at these neutrals I'm getting with the green and the red mixed together. So that is good to know because these neutral colors can really fill a painting and then when you have pops of color next to them, they look even brighter and bolder and more beautiful because they're paired next to these beautiful neutrals. There I pushed it a little more towards the green and we're getting some olives and some tan colors. And I just keep playing on my palette with these colors until my page is full. And honestly, you could do pages and pages of the same combo, but I just like to have an overview of what I could make with these colors. And then if I want to explore a palette further, I can use another page and just keep going and making the values darker or lighter. But ooh, look at that combo. The olive with that pink so that pink looks even more beautiful because it's surrounded by the tan to the left and the dusky gray purples to the top that's why that color looks so pretty 
I don't use pink much, but that pink is really beautiful, so I could find a way to add that into my paintings for sure. So because I had that pink, I added a bit of yellow to make it a little orange, and then the complement of orange is blue. So now I can see what kind of neutrals I can get with the orange and the blue, and that was like a brownish gray. Now I can add more of the Quinn Magenta in, and look at that purple. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> Um, the good thing about using three colors is you know that you have gotten all of the colors on this page from those three colors. So if you want to mix it again, you can figure it out. It might take a little trial and error, but you know what colors are in it, and that is a huge step towards figuring out what the recipe, I guess you could say, is. So I could make that beautiful purple or those olives if I played around again and wanted them just by knowing the three colors that I used to uh, play with these. So my page is almost full. I'm going to add one more lighter bit of that, those purples that were so pretty. So now you can see there's a lot of bright, bold colors uh, that I probably wouldn't use too much of, but then, um, get that off of there, um, there are lots and lots of neutral and muted colors that would look really beautiful together. So just play around with that and see what you can come up with. Thanks for joining me today. I'm all about helping you grow your own creative practice full of peace, intention, and curious exploration. Find out more when you visit jenfletcherart.com. I'll see you soon.